Hi everyone, this is Adam Virgil, and in this video we're going to go through how to use the maxifs function in Google Sheets. And this is a really powerful function in sports science because you can get, for example, let's say that you wanted to get the highest jump height per athlete. You could use the maxifs function to do that. Or if you wanted to get the most recent date that an athlete weighed in, you could do that using the maxifs function as well. But here we're going to use GPS data that we have. And this isn't real data, I just made it up. So let's pretend like we have a team of athletes and we have dates over here. We have the athlete names here and their peak velocity or max velocity on any given date. And we're going to go through a couple of examples using maxifs for getting information that might be valuable from what we've collected here. The first example is what if we want to get the maximum velocity that each athlete achieved? Well, one way to do that would just be to look through the data, or another would be to use the maxifs function. So let's get started. For maxifs, we go equals maxifs, open parenthesis, and I'll click on this question mark. And the nice thing about this function is that it works the exact same way as some other functions, including min ifs, average ifs, and sum ifs. They're all different aggregations, but work the exact same way. So if you know how to use average ifs, you know how to use max ifs. And I have a video on average ifs that you can check out if you need a refresher on that. So the first thing that we need to get is a range. And that range is essentially the value that you want to go in the cell that you're performing this calculation in. So we're performing the calculation in this cell, and we want the maximum velocity for this athlete to go here. So for the range, we can just select column C, because we want the velocity, comma, and move on to the second argument, which is criteria range 1, and then criterion 1. So now we're saying, all right, we, got, we want the maximum velocity, but when what is true? Well, when the athlete in our data set is equal to the athlete here. So for criteria range one, we want to look for the athlete in our data set. That's the range that we're looking in, comma. And what do we want to find in that range? What's criterion one? Well, we want to find this athlete right here. And close the parenthesis and click enter. And they're doing a suggestion and that's fine. We, that, that's right, but I'm not going to do it right now. So now what we have is we have the maximum max velocity for Laquan James. And we can quickly see by looking at the values for this individual that this is correct. Here's their maximum max velocity, and it goes right here. And before I drag this formula down, because we're going to apply it in other places, I just want to lock some things in. So I'm putting dollar signs around the Cs, around the Bs, or before each C, before each B, and before the E. Now what that's going to enable me to do is I'm going to be able to paste this formula around and it won't really affect anything that I'm doing. Now I'll click enter. Now I'm going to drag this formula down so it applies to each of these athletes. And now what we have, and I'll just make this a number, I'll make it two decimals. Now we have the maximum velocity for each athlete for their entirety in this data set, which might be a season or many seasons. And if we wanted to calculate, let's say, 90% of the max velocity for each athlete, we could use the exact same formula. And you'll see where I'm going with this when we get to the end, because all of these components are going to tie into one big formula to get a really nice piece of information. So I'm going to copy this formula here that we have and paste it. And the only thing that we have to do here is multiply this number, which is the maximum velocity for this athlete, by, so multiplied by 0.9, and click enter. Now that is 90% of this athlete's maximum velocity. And if we, if we drag this formula down, that'll apply to each of these athletes. And I guess maybe to take this one step further, if you wanted to control the percentage of maximum velocity that you want to see here, you can just add a cell with a number in it. Let's say uh, we're going to add that cell right here, this yellow cell that I'll make. And this is the percentage that we want to multiply the max velocity by. So instead of 90% of max velocity, maybe we want 80%. And the way that we can do that is instead of multiplying this by 0.9, we can multiply it by 
this cell right here. And we'll lock that in so that when I drag the formula down, the cell doesn't move with the formula. Or the cell reference doesn't move with the formula. And we'll click Enter and drag it down. But because nothing is in this cell, it's giving us a zero. If we type in, let's say, 0.8 for 80%, now we have 80% of the max velocity for each athlete, and maybe we want 50%. And notice the number gets smaller. Now it's 50% of the max velocity for each athlete. Let's bring it back to 0.9 for now as we go through the rest of these steps. Now we're going to use max if with dates. So how do we get the last date that this athlete achieved 90% of their max velocity? And we'll use, instead of actually being 90%, we'll use the value that we dictate here. So when was the last date that the athlete achieved whatever the percentage of max velocity is that's in here? And I want to start this formula from scratch instead of copying and pasting and manipulating because I think it's good practice and it's a little bit different. But it works the exact same way. So we can go equals max ifs, open parenthesis, and what do we want to go in this cell? Well, we don't want a velocity to go in the cell anymore. We want a date. We want the maximum date or the latest date. So for the range argument, we will select the column with date in it. So we want the maximum date, comma, well, when what is true? Well, we know that we want the maximum date for the athlete in question, so that's the first piece of criteria. So we, when the criteria range 1 is B to B, so we're looking for the athlete in B to B, and criterion 1 is the athlete right here. And if we just close that off and click Enter, and fine, suggested fill, and I'm just going to make this a, an actual date field, so we'll go to Format, Number, Date. Now what this is telling us is that this is the latest date for each athlete. But nothing is tied to it. It's just the latest date that they're in the data set. And that might be valuable to you. So that's a pretty critical piece of information sometimes. And let's lock in these cells so that when we copy it and paste it over, it won't move. Click Enter. And drag it down again. But this isn't what we want. We want the latest date for the athlete in which their maximum velocity for that date was greater than this number, or greater than 90% of maximum velocity. So let's add in another criterion, comma, criteria range 2. So we want to know also when the velocity, comma, is, quote, greater than, quote, ampersand, that's just nomenclature after a comma that you need to use for referring to a cell. And we want it to be greater than the cell that we're referring to. So we want to know also when the max velocity is greater than this number right here. And we can close the parentheses. And before I lock close uh, everything, I'm going to lock this in. Lock in the Cs and we'll lock in the G so that when we, if we paste this around, we won't get affected and click enter and now we can drag this down now what this is saying is for example let's look at Mikhail Jordan this is saying that 10 20 2019 was the last time in this data set that he or she surpassed this number and let's check that and this number is 90 percent of max velocity so let's look 8.18 they surpassed it then, so this would be the latest date, 10 20, 2019. They didn't surpass it here, they didn't surpass it here, and they didn't surpass it here. So the date should be 10 20, 2019, and that's what it is. And the next thing that we need to do is get the most recent date in the data set for each athlete, which we've already done. So what we can do is we can copy this formula and paste it right here. And all we have to do is remove the argument that looks at the velocity, because all we care about is the latest date. So I'm going to remove that portion, close the parenthesis there. So now we want the maximum date when the athlete, whatever's in column B, is equal to whatever's in this cell here, which is the athlete in question. 
and click enter. And sure, autofill. And I'll make this also a format number date. So now we have the latest date in the data set and the last time that people achieved 90% of max velocity. And what we can see is if we change this number, let's change it to 0.8, notice that some of these dates changed. But what will not change is their most recent date in the data set unless we were to remove it. Now, this is why did I do each of these things? To show you how to get the days since the last time they achieved greater than 90% of max velocity, or in this case, greater than 80% of max velocity, whatever is in this cell. Maybe we change it back to 0.9. So, there are two different ways you can go about doing this. If you want to look at this every single day and have that number of days update every day, regardless of how many, if an athlete is in a data set or not, or data is being collected or not, you can do it this first way that we're going to go through. And we're going to start with a function called today. It goes equals today. And we'll just open parenthesis, close parenthesis, parenthesis, and click enter. Now what this is showing is today's date. So today is November 20th, 2020. And simply we can do minus the last date where greater than 90% max velocity was achieved. Well, it's whatever is in this cell, so 90% right now. And click enter. And this would tell us that this athlete, the last time they achieved greater than 90% of max velocity, according to our data, is 398 days ago. And if we were to drag this down, it would apply to each athlete, and they'd have a slightly different number of days, maybe. But what we this isn't that helpful. What if we wanted all of what if this is the only thing that we wanted to know? Well, we use max ifs. So we've already done all these calculations, and I wanted to separate them out so that we could figure all this out together. And instead of subtracting this number or this date, we can copy this formula and exchange that cell with this formula and click enter and just note right now that the last number is 396 and I'll drag this down so 396 maybe I'll just type it right here and maybe we'll just type in 343 right here just so so that we can see cuz I'm going to drag this down and right now it's in a date format but if we move it to a number format, so we want to format it as a number, and let's, the numbers are exactly the same. We just replaced a formula that we already did with referring to a cell, or the other way around. We replaced referring to a cell with the formula that we did. So one thing in this formula that we have <laughs> is that it's referring to another number that we calculated prior. Again, using max ifs. So we used, we've already used max ifs once in this formula, and we had to use max ifs to get this number too. So what we can do is if we go into this formula and see this where we're referring to G2, which is what we calculated using another max ifs, is we can replace this entire formula here that we calculated with this G2. And we'll paste that and click enter. And notice, let's drag it down, nothing has changed. The formula is getting longer, but we've already used max ifs twice. And that's it. So that's, so it's a big formula, but we used max ifs twice to get the days since the last time that they reached greater than 90% of max velocity. Now, let's focus on the beginning of this formula. I said I'd show you two ways. The first is relative to today, but what if we wanted the other way? Like, we just wanted to know relative to the last time that they were in this data set. The way that we could do that is take this formula that we calculated right here and replace this with today. So I'm going to copy all of this. Go in here remove today and paste so now we're getting the maximum date for the athlete in question and subtracting the maximum date of the athlete in question for when they achieved greater than 
whatever percentage we typed in the yellow box of max velocity. And if we click enter, it's zero days here. And we can quickly see that's because the last date this person achieved greater than 90% of max velocity is also their most recent date in the data set. That makes sense. And we can see that right here by this being the latest value that is greater than this number for this individual. And if we drag this down, every, everyone achieved greater than 90% of max velocity um, on their most recent date, except for this person who achieved greater than 90% of max velocity three days for their most recent date in the data set. And maybe if we change this number, I don't know what's going to happen. If we change 0.95, Well, there we go. Here's a good example. So this person, Harry Bird, they achieved greater than 90%, 95% of max velocity, which is this number right here on 10-18-2019, and they haven't achieved it since. They haven't achieved anything greater than this number since then, and now it's months later, according to this data set. So... That's that's all I want to go through, but we did it. We created a formula with three max ifs in it, so I hope that this tutorial was helpful in learning about max ifs. And if you enjoyed it and got something out of it, please give it a like, um, subscribe, let YouTube know that um, this stuff is valuable. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support and feedback. Let me know what I can do better, and I'll see you in the next video.